Do you ever lie awake at night, replaying one moment of the day over and over where you made a mistake? You overanalyze that moment and keep thinking of what you could have done differently. Or do you ever catch yourself looking around at friends and peers and think, wow, they really have everything going for them. It must be so easy for them to be grateful because they have so much to be happy about. And then you pause and compare their happiness to your own life and can't help but feel envy, regret, frustration, shame, anger. It seems so easy to zoom in on what's missing or not working in our own lives. I don't know how familiar you are with these narratives, but they were common occurrences for me when I was a student in high school. It wasn't until I gained an awareness of the negative and destructive thinking that I had that I was able to zoom out on the bigger picture and focus on gratitude. My name is Ella Sager, and I'm here today to spread a message about zooming out on the bigger picture, gratitude. First, we need to look beyond the numbers and let go of self-criticism. Second, we need to embrace the connections and relationships in our lives. And third, we need to strive for the opportunity of self-discovery and look for growth. Unlike my initial perception that happiness causes gratitude, it's actually the opposite. Practicing gratitude creates happiness. So first, let's look beyond the numbers. I'm a math teacher, I love numbers. But sometimes we become so hyper-focused on quantifying that we begin to define ourselves by a number or score. We live in a toxic, comparison-driven culture. How many followers do you have on Instagram? How many likes on a post? How many snaps today? How many colleges did you apply to? How many AP classes are you taking? What's your ACT score, your GPA? Does a low score in your freshman math class mean that you won't get into your dream college? No, you are more than a number. The bigger picture is, what do you do when you receive that low score on a test? What do you attribute academic success or failure to? Do you pause and reflect on your study habits, sleep, preparation, metacognition, self-advocacy? This transformation, we need to take our self-critical perceptions and transform them into appreciation for the wisdom gained through those challenging experiences. When we practice gratitude, we can learn to turn our failures into learning opportunities. And this practice of zooming out on the bigger picture and reframing our fat failures as appreciation and gratitude takes focus, practice, and awareness. Two stories come to mind when I think of how easy it is to zoom in on the numbers rather than the bigger picture. Just this past summer, my almost three-year-old son, Ryerson, was sick with a fever. I called the doctor and he asked, how's your son doing? I responded, he has a 103 degree fever. Should I be concerned? He said, I didn't ask what his fever was. I said, how is he feeling and acting? And I had lost sight in that moment of the fact that I had a happy son who was acting much like his normal self. But I was so focused on the number. So I reframed and took a step back and appreciated in that moment that I had a happy, healthy son who would soon get better. A similar story is one in which I was coaching the girls cross country team. One of my athletes crossed the finish line and I said, how was your race? She responded, I got 21 minutes. I said, I've got my watch right here. I've got your time. I asked, how was your race mentally, physically? So it's these moments that we find it so easy to zoom in on a number rather than the entire experience. 
One of the obstacles to practicing gratitude is comparison. When we become so focused on competition, whether it be academic, social, athletic, we can begin to harbor some negative, self-critical thoughts. And the more we feel these destructive perceptions, the more these tendencies grow. But if we can reframe our attitude into appreciation and gratitude, we can begin to foster courage, comfort, and resilience. Practicing gratitude helps us focus on what we have rather than what we lack. So we learn to look beyond the numbers. Now, the second step in practicing gratitude is to embrace the connections and relationships in our lives. When people ask me what I teach, I respond that I'm a teacher of people, not just math. Every Friday in my class, students have an opportunity to share a unique fact about themselves with each other, called Fun Fact Friday. And students agree that this is the best day of the week because we let down our walls, we become vulnerable, and we get to know each other's stories. We create a community in our classroom that students feel supported both in failure and success. So get to know each other's stories. Find something in common with a classmate. Talk to a stranger in the hallway. Talk to your teachers. Be present in the moment. Be kind to yourself and forgive others as well as yourself. The more we practice gratitude, the stronger our relationships will become. So much of what we enjoy and depend on in life is a result of our connections with other people. When I recall high school memories, one of the moments I remember is standing on stage at graduation, getting a medal placed around my neck by my history teacher and track coach for earning a spot in the top 20 of my graduating class. And while this moment marked an achievement that I'm certainly proud of, what is even more memorable to me is the entire pre-period that this teacher and coach spent with me making a list of priorities that helped me make a decision in my life. When I recall this conversation with my teacher and coach, we made a list of pros and cons of whether or not I should give up track my senior year because I was so stressed out. It was through this conversation and this positive relationship that I learned a few things. I was actually more productive with my free time when it was limited. The social and physical aspects of being a member of the track team actually helped relieve my stress. And this simple strategy of writing out a list of pros and cons is still something I use to this day to help me make decisions. Instead of focusing on my personal achievements, I zoomed out on my experience as a teammate within a community. The camaraderie and relationships that I developed on the team were positive and fulfilling. My coaches made me feel valued and validated. And it's a good thing I did not give up track my senior year because that is how I met my best friend and now husband. We have shared over 14 years of our lives together and look back fondly on those high school memories. When I was able to reframe my perspective into the appreciation for the connections and relationships on that team, I was able to practice gratitude and cope more effectively with the stress in my life. I began to feel more satisfied, happy, and hopeful. In fact, research shows these effects to be true of people who practice gratitude. An article published by Harvard Medical School summarized the psychology research of Drs. Emmons and McCullough, two leaders in the science of gratitude. In one study, a group of participants wrote down things that they were thankful for every day for 10 weeks. The other group wrote down things that aggravated them every day for 10 weeks. 
And at the end of the 10 weeks, the group who practiced gratitude not only felt more optimistic about their lives, but also exercised more frequently and had fewer physician's visits. There are multiple benefits of gratitude, both mentally and physically. To sum up the science, people who practice gratitude are more happy, healthy, and resilient. The more we regularly reflect on the good in our lives and shift our perception towards the positive, the more our gratitude grows and the easier it becomes. As a student in high school, I began to understand how important it was for me to have a positive, caring relationship with my teachers. When I develop a connection with a teacher, I am much more likely to be interested in the content and to succeed in the class. My zooming out on the appreciation for the rapport I created with my teachers proved extremely valuable to me in selecting the right college. While I had been so focused on going to the University of Illinois, both because of academic prestige as well as peer influence, I soon realized that I did not want to be a face in a crowded lecture hall. I wanted my teachers to know who I was and to have a positive relationship with me. The bigger picture is more than just a name on a transcript. The bigger picture is the experiences and connections that you make in your life. My colleagues and I are all on an equal playing field, no matter where we went to school or how many degrees we have. What we bring to the table are our personal stories. My relationship with my students, my colleagues, friends, and family these are the bigger perspective for me. The final step in strengthening one's experience of gratitude is to embrace the opportunity for self-discovery and growth. I find it true that many students enter high school as a question mark and leave as a period. How do we continue to foster our curiosity and passion? Maybe we should stop asking, what do you want to be when you grow up? There is more to being human than achievement. Our self-worth and our view of our peers should not only be validated by grades and career paths. What do I want to be when I grow up? I want to be conscientious. I want to be a person of integrity. I want to be passionately curious. I want to make a difference in the lives of others. So who are you? Who are you today? Who do you wish to be? What do you believe in? What makes you happy? What are your priorities? Do you advocate for what you believe in, even if it's not a popular choice? Do you endlessly scroll through social media just to fill your time? Or do you pause and reflect on the silence and beauty of the world around you? One thing that I personally value is growth mindset. Some questions I try to ask myself daily are, do I embrace challenges or avoid them? Do I persist in the face of setbacks? or do I give up easily? Do I see effort as a path to mastery or effort is fruitless? Do I learn from criticism or do I ignore useful negative feedback? Do I find inspiration in the success of others or do I feel threatened by others' success? High school is an opportunity to develop into your true self. So zoom out on the bigger picture. Look beyond the numbers and let go of self-criticism. Embrace the connections and relationships in your life and look for the opportunity of self-discovery and growth. Life is a qualitative endeavor, 
not a quantitative one. It's easy to practice gratitude when life is good. But when things get challenging, I challenge you to find the light in the darkness. Instead of focusing on what we don't have, reframe your perspective into your daily gifts. I challenge you to recognize the good in each day, no matter how small. My call to action is this. Every night before you go to bed, think about or write down three specific things that you are thankful for that day. Try to avoid repetition and keep it fresh and detailed. It can be as simple as, I'm thankful for my hot shower this morning, my friend's smile in the hallway, and my delicious lunch. The more we experience wonder, thankfulness, and appreciation, our mood transforms to joy. <laughs> Gratitude unlocks happiness, improves our health, strengthens our relationships, sharpens our attention, and opens our hearts. I would like to close with a poem called Open in Gratitude by Patricia Ellsberg. Open in gratitude for the breath that nourishes every cell in your body and has sustained you from the moment you were born. For the miracle of your body that despite whatever weaknesses or limitations serves you and allows you to sense the wonders of the world. For your brain that coordinates all the functions of your body without you even being aware of it. For the consciousness that allows you to perceive, feel, and be amazed. For the eyes that allow you to see the abounding beauty of the world that surrounds you. Colors and shapes, the face of a loved one, for the ears that enable you to hear birds singing, wind rustling in the leaves, words people say to you, and the laughter of children. For the sense of smell that allows you to enjoy the fragrance of flowers, the scent of fresh air, your favorite food. For your mouth and tongue that enable you to taste the fruits of the earth, to enjoy a ripe peach, or chocolate melting in your mouth. For the skin that protects you and yet allows you to touch and sense the wonders of the world. Feel warmth, coolness, softness, the touch of a loved one. For your heart that beats faithfully your whole life from before you were even born. Open to a sense of wonder and gratitude for the amazing gift of being awake and alive in this precious human form. The fact that we exist, or that anything exists at all, is a wondrous mystery. We all live in the midst of a miracle. Thank you.